Welcome to the second video of plastic plating. So in my last video, I explained you everything you need to know about electroplating itself. So if you haven't seen that, please watch that now. I put the link down in the description. So but now we actually get rid of those and we move on to plastic pieces. Move on. In this video, I am going to experiment with electroplating plastics. So, as you saw, it's pretty easy to gold plate metal, but plastic isn't conductive, right? I think a few of you guys with eagle eyes already saw that little thing over there. It is called copper conductive spray. With this spray, we are able to coat our plastic parts so they conduct electricity. A nice glossy finish is of utmost importance. You are always trying to confuse us with these big words. So I'm going to start off to clean and grind this surface to the flattest in my ability. But we both know you're flat. In this process, of course, I will remove the gold leaf plating I already did here. I got my primer. I got sanding paper, 320 grit and 600 grit, polishing compound, the polishing machine, a lacquer repair kit. I'm going to link you all the products down below for you to buy. I am going to start off with a 320 grit to remove all the bumps I had on there from the gold leaf plating. After that, I move on to the 600 grit wet, so to really smooth it out. Then I am going to use the primer to give the paint something good to adhere to, because it will be at the end the bonding layer between the gold and the part itself. After I primed it, I will go ahead and 600 grit sand it again. Then I will use the polishing compound one and the polishing compound two. That's for damaged and matte paints. That one is for new paint, so already shiny, a few scratches in there. So it's a finer grit, you could say. After I did that, I will give it a wash with the electro cleaner again to remove all the waxes that are in here. Then I'm going ahead and apply my copper conductive paint. After I did that, I will go ahead and sand it again. It depends on the roughness. I will go with the wet 600 grit. After that, in this polishing kit, there is a 3000 grit in there. So I will wet sand with the 3000 grit. I will polish again with a rough polish. Then I will polish again with the fine polish. And in here, there are two types of polishes, even finer one. First of all, I will use the step one tube to polish, then the step two tube to polish the two tube is hard to say. <laughs> then I will use the step two to finish polish. The police is already in his room. Polishing. For all the polishing, I will use the polishing machine to get really get in there. Polish, 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 fine polish. You got that. Okay. Yeah. So first of all, let's get start grinding. Be sure you grind in every corner and you get every angle. If your part is a little rougher at the beginning because it's fresh off the printer, use some 80 grit, 120 grit and work your way up to 320 and 600. So let's get started. And remember, get every angle and every corner. Dude, that's obviously not what I meant. Because I ended up removing a lot more material than I thought, I'm not going to use a primer on this one. I'm going to use a high build filler for this. High build filler like this basically fills in all the little scratches and stuff like that you did while sending or handling your part. So it will give you a nice even finish. Let me clean up that mess. Let's go downstairs and start applying it. So the paint came out pretty damn well. I already ground it with 3000 grit wet. The thing is, I have a few spots where I still have nooks and crannies and stuff like that. But I'm not bothering with that too much because I want to add battle damage to it at the end. Because it's already that flat, I will try to just start with the fine polish here. So let's open it up and see what's in there. You have your sandpaper, 3000 grit. You have the finishing polish. You have the piece of fabric to polish. Yeah, who needs that? You have the repair. The number one is for scratches. So it's a little bit more aggressive. Number two, two tube is hard to say, <laughs> is um, to prepare your part. So 
So I'm going around in circles and get it really in there to see if it will come loose. So if you look on the comparison, it helps a little bit. So let's try out our polishing machine. So the polishing machine comes with two gloves. Rough one, I would say, and the fine one. I'm going to use the fine one for this. I'm so sorry, this never happened to me before. What did we learn? Work it in. I mean, kind of works. The good news is that it's holding on, so I can move on to what I wanted to polish because it doesn't rub through. Really nice finish. By the way, I have no idea what I'm doing. What the heck? Let's start and hope for the best. So I ended up breaking it again. Uh, Let me quickly fix that. One eternity later. Guys, look at that shine. Nice. Yeah. I could have made a better job painting, but I'm not going to repaint that. Maybe if it's now an excess, but I, I still have two steps in front of me. If it's a success, I might go back and redo that. So, so now that we prepared our parts, we can test for connectivity. I will use a little connectivity tester for that. Let's see. So I set it to measure resistance. A few moments later. So as I saw it, it's still not conductive. So that's why we have one additional step, copper plating. So you think, how would you like to copper plate if you doesn't have any connectivity whatsoever? The good thing about that is you can even apply it without the current and it will adhere to the particles in your paint. So let's change back to our graphite electrode. And we start with a little wash without electricity. In this step, it is really important to wear gloves because this copper is sour. So it will actually hurt your skin if you get it on there. It will not immediately hurt, but it's not good at all. And it's copper. So you have to look that you use a sour copper plating for this process. I will link this one in the description down below. This one comes with your power supply in the set. So if you start, you see an immediate color change. Look at that. You see this color changing from here to here? So let's move along. After just a few seconds, let's test if we have conductivity. Not yet. Set your power supply to four volts and attach your negative. Please be aware, this paint is really soft. So wherever you put the clamp, you will damage it. So it's a good idea to have maybe something sticking out to the side while painting where you can attach it. What you can do to make it conductive is start at your clamp and work your way out. So you will get your conductivity to the side. Don't get too slow, otherwise you will burn. So we upped to six volts. So let's test it again. And we have conductivity. If you have burned spots like that, just go over it once more. It will disappear eventually. And if not, the gold will take care of it. You can also see the conductivity of your part by watching the ampere meter on your power supply. You can also, instead of clamping it down, just hold it down so you damage the paint less. As you can see here, it started bubbling. That is because we exceeded one ampere. So I've gone down on the ampere that's what she said! <laughs> About to half of the dial. Rinse it off with distilled water. For my mask, I am going to attach my electrode somewhere in the eye where you can't see it that well. Go for the eyes! Which ones? Let's try that. I'm very, very nervous about that. It took me a lot of effort to get it to that quality of paint. I'm giving it a good wash everywhere, even though I have no electricity at this point. And then I start from my clamp. So we start to get a little bit of current down here. Because it is copper in copper, you should make sure that you cover every inch of the surface. Divide your surface into like patterns and try to stick to one part of it till you get a nice flow of electricity everywhere. You know it's good when you have 0.1 ampere everywhere on your part, no matter where. 
at minimum. So before plating the part with copper, you should use the electro cleaner again. Just without current is okay. So after washing it with the electro cleaner, you basically don't have to rinse it off in between, but it will remove all the oxide layer from your freshly made copper. Then you can copper plate better, so it will have a better adhesion. You want to add a really thick, good layer of copper here. So now it really starts to go up. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, nearly everywhere. Now we want to give it a quick, fast rub. Add copper. The thicker the copper layer, the better the adhesion of the gold will be. So now let's see if we can try to get rid of one of, of these little marks, electricity marks, by plating over it. So we reached around 0.5 amperes all the way around our part. And you can see the surface did quite change. So let's rinse it off with distilled water and see if we can get some gold on there. So we have conductivity all through the part. So as you can see, I have some damage over here and here, but I'm not too worried about it because I wanted to make my coffee machine to look like basically Iron Man threw away his helmet because it got damaged in a battle and he just got a new one. And I scavenged it and made a coffee machine out of it. So that will do. That's what happens when you don't rinse off your part after you plated it with copper. It will oxidize and get dark. Make sure to clean it off. I applied 5 volts and used the electro cleaner to clean it. Give it a quick rinse again with distilled water. Okay, I'm quite nervous if this is going to work. Let's see if we can cover the dark spots and stuff like that. The damage of the clamps, we will have no option. So normally you should nickel plate this stuff first. Uh, that's called foreshadowing. So it isn't that soft, but I don't have nickel here, so I will skip that step. You probably shouldn't. Let's see if it works. We have current flowing. 5 volts. It starts to get golden. So it took a bit of the gold. Let's give it a quick rinse. See if we can polish it and if we still see some copper part. I see some here, but let's see. So I'm done with the gold plating. And if you look, the gold on my key looks a little different. That has a reddish tint to it. I'm wondering if that might be the copper below. So I think I will retry that and you can watch that here.